<laughs> so uh, ergogenic aids for cycling, for endurance cycling. Um, I have a number of supplements here. Uh, I think that th all these supplements are effective and in fact I think some of these are readily recognizable and widely accepted as effective supplements but so not all of these supplements though in my opinion are effective within the scope of an endurance gravel ride. Uh, so I'm going to go through all of these and I'll try to start with what I think are the most effective and we'll go through to some of the supplements that I think are marginally effective and some that I think uh, although generally accepted as a supplement that works it's not going to be beneficial within the scope of a gravel endurance ride. So let's start off with the go-to. Uh, cycling is pretty much synonymous with caffeine. Uh, and so, and, you know, and in fact, most cyclists are big-time coffee junkies. I don't drink coffee. Uh, I consume typically maybe 30 to 40 milligrams of caffeine a day, usually in the form of tea. But before a race, I'll take one of these. That's 200 milligrams of caffeine. And usually, if it's going to be, let's say it's going to be a 100-mile ride, so somewhere between five and a half and six-hour event, midway through somewhere in there, I'll take another one of these. And then throughout the race, I'll consume additional caffeine, maybe another 100 milligrams in the form of either gels or liquid refreshment. Lots of solid research uh, backing up the effectiveness of caffeine as an ergogenic aid, and I think anybody who's tried it will tell you, yeah, it works. So, yeah, caffeine, probably at the top of the list in terms of the most effective supplement. So the next supplement uh, actually does also have a lot of research behind it, but is not commonly accepted as an ergogenic aid in any, in any sport, and that is trisodium phosphate. So this stuff works great for me. Uh, acute dosage, not so much for me, but uh, chronic and by chronic. So chronic for this means four milligrams a day, uh, six to five days prior to the event. A uh, milligram of this is about a quarter teaspoon. Um, there are some regulation issues, in my opinion, in the body if you slam down, you know, four four doses, four grams all at once. So I try to split up my dosage. So I have two in the morning, two in the afternoon. I'll take two in the morning in the smoothie. In the afternoon, I'll just dissolve it in the water and drink it. Tastes horrible, but it's not too bad. Uh, this, this stuff is great and seems to be additive with caffeine. So, you know, you get a, a bump, a few percentage points in performance. Um, from this, a few percentage points in performance from caffeine, and for me, I, it's almost similar, you know. I don't know if there's two, anyhow. This is effective. There's not, certainly not as much research uh, on this as there are for some supplements, but there's some solid, well-designed studies out there um, that are actually cycling specific with trained individuals. So, um, yeah, so this is kind of a go-to for me too, and I've been using this stuff for a long time. Uh, and you know, it's not, you don't have to have a lot of planning. It's just you know five days before the event, and and there is some evidence that. Uh, well, I'm not going to go into washout periods and things like that. If you want to know, look it up. PubMed, it's great. Number three, citrulline malate. So um, I had some experience with citrulline from my strength sport days, and I did not find it to be a very effective supplement. But when I combed back through the research, I thought, you know, maybe I need to give this a second chance because it, it does seem, and you know, a lot of the you know the mechanism that makes this stuff work inside your body makes sense that it might be a more effective ergogenic aid in an endurance type situation so I gave it a try and it seemed it does seem to be effective uh, but not in a acute dosage acute do dosage with this does nothing except make the <laughs> leave a tart taste in my mouth uh, this stuff is not for acute dosing you gotta you gotta take it chronically uh, so, you know, I'm talking four to five 
grams a day for uh, two and a half to three weeks prior to the event. Um, but works. You can tell the difference between taking it and not taking it. So, uh, yeah, Julian Malik, consider it. Ibuprofen. Not it's so effective, yes. Specifically for an endurance type setting and specifically I don't think it has any positive benefit in the first half of the race. Basically, this lets you go harder because you're not feeling as much discomfort. I feel like in the second half of the race if I slam down some, some type of insight, there's a benefit there. I'm putting this on the list. Mm, somewhat controversial, but I think I can show you pretty compelling evidence that in a cycling endurance situation, or you know, not even an endurance situation, let's say a time trial, which you know, you can argue that's an endurance situation, but typically time trials aren't going to last for more than an hour uh, if you're good at it. Um, but definitely there's some some pretty good evidence specific to cycling that ibuprofen is going to provide some benefit there. My, in my judgment it does provide some benefits so something else to consider. So these four right here are kind of my go-to uh, my go-to supplement combination. So now we move into the stuff that may be marginally effective um, or not effective at all in an endurance type situation. So this is tyrosine there's some pretty compelling evidence that there's a link between endurance performance and dopamine in the brain. There's no hard evidence that tyrosine, if you take tyrosine, then there is an increase in performance. However, I will say there is some research, cycling specific research, that shows that if you take Ritalin, right, that in some situations it's a definite improvement in time trial performance. What are those situations? Uh, well, if it's hot. Uh, I'm not advocating that you take Ritalin, which is what they did in the experiment, but I did have some experience with tyrosine. When I take tyrosine, I notice a difference in the level of alertness, in my you know, perception. Uh, but I never notice a difference in performance. But when I read the Ritalin research and I'm going to do a race and temperature, I thought, hey, you know, I know tyrosine is associated with increased level of dopamine in vivo, although I don't know that there's any uh, hard evidence that, that, for, that that's true for humans, but it's likely that it, that it could be. Uh, so if, I'm, if it's going to be hot, why not give it a try? It's not, in my experience, uh, strength sport experience didn't hurt my performance, didn't really help it. So I thought maybe it's going to be the same thing here. Uh, so I take a couple, couple thousand milligrams of tyrosine. Uh, if I'm into a, a endurance ride or race and it's a little warm out and I feel like my performance is suffering because of it, I might have a couple of these on hand and I'll slam them down during the race. Maybe it helps, maybe it doesn't. Somewhat tenuous. I'm not too proud to receive assistance from the placebo effect either. So, you know, if you feel like you're suffering from the heat, and sometimes just if you have an affirmative action you can take against that, uh, it makes you feel better and helps you perform a little better. So now, let's move on to some supplements that, that I think there's a lot of compelling evidence that they work, and most people will say that they work, but either don't work for me or don't work in an endurance cycling situation. And the first of those is baking soda. So I think this stuff works. The problem is uh, gastric distress. So if you can tolerate baking soda, I think you should be using it. If you tolerate, tolerate it, it's great, but if you don't tolerate it, it's real bad, right? So here's a case where science can help you lose a race too. Uh, so definitely try this uh, in practice before you try it in race. I can't tolerate it very well. 
Um, I, there are some protocols that, that you know I've done it when I'm running 5Ks. Sometimes I've I've got it to work to where I can you know take a acute dosage and and get it to work and it's very very effective for me in that situation and I suspect it would work very well in endurance situation too and there's a lot of research that support that but it's, you're really playing with fire so don't recommend it. Creatine. Let me be clear I'm not saying creatine is not an effective supplement. Uh, I think it is an effective supplement. In fact you know I was an early adopter of creatine way back in the day when this was like 148 bucks a pound. Creatine monohydrate is an effective supplement um, for some things not for endurance cycling. But here's the thing you know it's it helps you with bursts of high intensity effort so it's great for weightlifting. This in an endurance situation this is actually I'm I'm gonna make the argument this is gonna hurt you more than it's gonna help you. So why is that? Well when you load with creatine uh, you're gonna put on or at least I put on four to five pounds so that's the various biologic changes that happen in your muscle that make the creatine effective also put weight on you because uh, it put weights it puts weight into the muscle so you're gonna be heavier and you're gonna be quite a bit heavier uh, not good for cycling if you're gonna be going up and down well if you're gonna be going up hills uh, and additionally in an endurance situation I don't believe the intensity of the effort is enough to receive any benefit, for, any benefit from the supplement. So you're basically getting no benefit for a material negative in terms of the weight gain. Uh, so don't use it. And I'm not speculating here. I've tried it. Uh, it doesn't help me. Additionally, uh, and this is probably going to piss a lot of people off, beta alanine. I, you know, it's not going to hurt you. I just don't think it's going to help you. Okay. So if you're doing like criterium racing probably it's okay uh, if you're doing track racing probably it's okay uh, if you're doing a 5k I find it to be an effective supplement I just think it's it's a waste either in a chronic or an acute dose in the context of a gravel endurance ride I just don't think the intensities you're going to be putting out in a gravel endurance ride typically uh, are high enough so that you'll see uh, material benefit from beta alanine. Um, so don't bother. That's my opinion. So anyhow, um, those are the supplements I use, the supplements I don't use. Um, I've tried them all, uh, so I, I do speak from experience. I've read a lot of research on most of these, uh, and I, I think all of these are solid supplements um, if you can tolerate them and if you understand how the supplement is designed to help you um, but not all of them are specific to endurance sports.